Well, hey, we know there's a lot going on around the world from floods to earthquakes to wars and rumors of wars. We've all been watching our TV screens, the, the news. Israel was invaded this past Saturday, and for the first time in 50 years, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu declared war against Hamas, against an enemy of Israel. This goes back to the Yom Kippur War of October of 1973. Now, October of 2023, 50 years later, they are at war once again. We read in scripture and we understand what the Bible says. The nations of this earth, at some point, will all turn against Israel. We understand that from Scripture, we, we see that in Scripture. So what we begin to look at through this conflict, through this ongoing conflict in, in the south, in the Gaza Strip with Hamas and in the north with Hezbollah, we begin to understand how the nations surrounding Israel will begin to hate and, and fight against and amp up their hostility towards Israel, wanting to wipe them off the face of the earth. And I would just challenge you to watch and, and to be in prayer as we see the things going on in Israel and as we understand that the Bible does speak clearly that all the nations of the earth are going to turn against Israel. If we don't think that World War III can happen, we are watching this foreshadowing now. We are watching all of the pieces being moved into place by God to create this environment where He will fulfill His plan and purpose, His will for this earth. But what do we do right now? What do we do as Christians here in America? How can we be challenged as Christians here in America right now where we are? I've heard many testimonies, many stories from Jewish followers of Jesus in Israel, and they have challenged Christians, especially those in America, to stand up and use their voices. I will challenge you now. We need to maintain a biblical perspective of who Israel is and who God is and why God has chosen them and how God has used them and what God has planned for them in the future. So we do need to maintain a biblical perspective. But we also need to use our voices. We need to use the social media platforms and, and, and various platforms that God has given us to voice our support for Israel. And we need to condemn what is happening against them. That is right. We know that we can't stop the prophetic timeline. We can't stop what God is planning, what God is ordaining, what God is orchestrating. But we can be challenged to pray. We can be challenged to search scripture and understand more thoroughly, more deeply, who God is, who Israel is, and what we can do now in support of them. If you think back to Genesis chapter 12, God told Abraham that through him, he was going to create a great nation. He said, everyone that, that curses you will be cursed. Everyone that blesses you will be blessed. And all the nations of this earth will be blessed through you, speaking to Abraham. And we see in Deuteronomy chapter 6 that God has chosen Israel as a possession. It says, you are a holy people belonging to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be his own possession out of all the peoples on the face of the earth. The Lord had his heart set on you and chose you, not because you are more numerous than all peoples, for you were the fewest of all peoples, but because the Lord loved you and kept the oath he swore to your ancestors, he brought you out with a strong hand and redeemed you from the place of slavery, from the power of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Know that the Lord your God is God, the faithful God who keeps his gracious covenant loyalty for a thousand generations with those who love him and keep his commands. In Jeremiah, we learn that the nation of Israel, chosen by God, the people of Israel, will be a nation before God forever. That will not stop. We need to understand Israel has a special place in the future for God, by God, through God, and because of God. Jeremiah 31, 
Verse number 35, this is what the Lord says. The one who gives the sun for light by day, the fixed order of moon and stars for light by night, who stirs up the sea and makes its waves roar. The Lord of armies is his name. If this fixed order departs from before me, this is the Lord's declaration. Only then will Israel's descendants cease to be a nation before me. This is what the Lord says. Only if the heavens above can be measured and the foundations of the earth below explored, will I reject all of Israel's descendants because of all they have done. This is the Lord's declaration. Folks, we have to understand God promised through Abraham that he would make a great nation from him, that those who, who blessed them would be blessed, those who cursed them would be cursed, and that through Abraham, through this chosen people of Israel, all the nations of earth would be blessed. And then God said, hey, I chose you not because you were, you were big or, or powerful, because you were the fewest people of all the earth, but I chose you to be my own possession, God said. And then we read in Jeremiah that, that the nation of Israel will be a nation before God forever. We have to understand that future prophecy, looking forward in, in prophetic scripture, God has a place and a purpose for Israel. And we must understand that as Christians. We must understand that here in America. That's why we pray for and support Israel. We understand God is going to do certain things because of his plan and purpose and will for the nation of Israel and to the nation of Israel to fulfill that plan and purpose and will. We've just got to uh, pray and support and, and, and send messages to and love and encourage those who are in Israel and pray for the salvation of those in Israel. We need to send messages to those who, who we love there in Israel, who we know who we are in relational circles with in Israel, who will listen. And we need to share and proclaim the gospel, the good news of who Jesus is and what he has accomplished for this world. Paul says about Israel, in Romans chapter 9, he says, I speak the truth in Christ. I'm not lying. My conscience testifies to me through the Holy Spirit that I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish, Paul says, that I myself were cursed and cut off from Christ for the benefit of my brothers and sisters, my own flesh and blood. And then he identifies his brothers, his sisters, his own flesh and blood here. He says, they are Israelites. And to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the temple service and the promises. The ancestors are theirs. And from them, by physical descent, came the Christ, who is God over all, praised forever. Amen. Paul is making sure that we understand now, generations later, readers and recipients of the word of God, that Israel, they are special people to God. And God formed them. God chose them. God created them. And God used them to bless all of the nations of this earth. And by physical descent, Paul says, we have the Christ, we have Jesus, the Messiah. Jesus was given to this world. Jesus, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, put on flesh for you and for me. Jesus went to a cross that we should have gone to. Jesus was, was killed and buried in a tomb, a tomb that, that really was reserved for us. Jesus was resurrected. Jesus was raised to life on the third day, defeating sin and death so that we can have eternal life through him. And folks, we need to share with everyone. We especially need to share and pray for those in Israel, Jewish people who don't yet know Jesus as Messiah. We need to pray that they will hear the word of God, that they will receive the word of God, that the Holy Spirit will begin to work through the word in their life to take root and to germinate, to grow, to sprout. 
We need to pray that they would come to faith in Jesus, Yeshua, the Messiah. We need to pray that they would accept the gospel, the good news of who Jesus is and what he has accomplished for them, for us, for all of the world. Folks, the time is short. We are nearer and nearer to the return of Christ. When we look around the world, when we reflect on floods and earthquakes and and wars and rumors of wars, and we tiptoe towards World War III, we see God is moving pieces into place to fulfill His plan and purpose for this world. We can't stop that. That's going to happen. We have right now, though, to continue to proclaim and share the gospel with, the, with those that God has supernaturally and strategically put us in relationship with. We have time right now to present Jesus, the Savior of the world, to those we love, to those who we are in relationship with so that they can be saved. God desires that all are saved. God desires that no one would perish, but all that would were would repent and come to faith and knowledge of Jesus, our Savior. Folks, we can continue to pray for Israel. We continue to stand with Israel. We continue to understand that Israel is on the offensive. They are moving against an enemy who has invaded them and has killed innocent people. We need to be okay with that. We need to be okay with saying that. I taught active shooter for so many years as a police officer, and I used to tell people when somebody comes into a, an environment, a, a school, a structure, a building, a business, whatever it is, and they start actively shooting, killing, maiming, destroying lives, sometimes the only way to stop that is to enter that environment offensively, aggressively, find that individual and kill them. Sometimes that's the only way to stop the innocent deaths of those who are being affected by that individual. Folks, we have to be okay saying that. We have to be okay saying that Israel is right in moving on the offensive against an enemy who came into and invaded their country on Saturday, Shabbat. We have to be okay saying that. We need to love and and pray for and support Israel. We need to pray that people will receive, will hear, will accept the gospel, the good news of who Jesus is and what he has accomplished for this world. Be praying, folks. Be on guard. Look up. Be watchful. Be alert. Keep going. Keep reading scripture. Keep understanding scripture. Keep praying and keep using those opportunities that God has given you to share and proclaim the gospel. Thank you.